The transformer's architecture is fundamental to almost all the large language models like ChatGPT, Vicuna, you name it. It has the transformers as the main building block of the architecture. If you want to get hands-on and train or fine-tune an LLM, you cannot escape working with the transformers Python library from Hugging Face. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the transformers library. There are mainly three components to learn this library. One is the pipeline. Next is the tokenizer and the last one is the models. Cutting across the tokenizers and the models is the auto classes, which I will also go through in this video. I've also created this Google Colab notebook and I will share with you in the description of this video. I've written this notebook with PyTorch in mind. Now, if you're someone who's working with TensorFlow, all you have to do is add TF before the classes. For example, the auto model class becomes TF auto model. So without further ado, let's get started. Like any other Python package, you can get started with transformers by just installing the Python transformers library using pip install transformers. Because we are going to modify a model and push it to the hugging face hub, we also need to install hugging face hub, which we can do using pip install upgrade hugging face hub. The most important element of the transformers library is the pipeline. The pipeline can have three elements. One is pre-processing and the next one is the model for inference and optionally that can also be post-processing. And the beauty of pipeline is that it abstracts away all the model details and all the technical details that you need to know when you're working with these models for inference. For example, if you just want to do a text classification or a sentiment analysis, you could initiate a task by saying text classification and simply create a text classifier straight away. And if you want to run inference on an example, I'm feeling very good today, then you can just run that through the classifier and you can get the output. In this case, it gives an output label of positive with a score of 0.99. Now, if you have multiple inputs to the pipeline, then you could provide a list of all those inputs and the pipeline classifier will be able to classify all those examples and give you the label for each of those along with the score corresponding to each of those labels. So when we create a pipeline this way, the pipeline gets initialized for the task with the default model. So we don't even have to provide any model name or worry about what model is being run. But there may be situations where we actually want to provide a specific model for inference, in which case we'll have to provide the model name. So I'm providing the model name Robota Large MNLI. I'm just passing it as a model parameter to the pipeline. This time, the pipeline uses the specific model for, in, for the classifier. And when I run the same example input, we get the label as entitlement, whereas previously we got the label as positive. There's something called the pipeline registry in which all the tasks that are possible are registered. So if you want to look at all the possible tasks, then you could just import that. And if you look at the, uh, the keys of the dictionary in the pipeline registry, then it shows all the possible tasks that we can do. For example, audio classification is one of the tasks image classification is one of the tasks and zero shot classification is one of the tasks. And the good news is that we can even create our own custom pipeline and then we can create our own tasks, which is quite different from all of these tasks. Let's say you want to create a custom pipeline for sentence pack classification where you are given a pair of sentences and you want to classify whether they are equivalent or not. So, and let's assume there's no pipeline for this and you want to create a pipeline. So the first step towards it is to define a class. In my example, I've set my pair classification pipeline and it inherits from the pipeline class of the transformers library, of course. And there are four functions that you need to make sure that you've written in order to use this class. So one is the serialized parameters, which takes care of doing some validation, let's say, on your input parameters. And the next one is the pre-processing function, which does all the pre-processing of the input data. For example, if your input is text, then you can define the tokenizer for the pre-processing. Once the pre-processing function is implemented, you also have to implement the forward pre-processed inputs through the model. Finally, you have to define the post-processing function, which is optional, with which you can actually do some post-processing on the outputs that you get from the model. As a second step, you have to register this pipeline 
to the pipeline registry so that transformers library is aware that you've created a new pipeline. So I've done these two steps and I've created this uh, my path classification pipeline. The way to run it is you can either use the pipeline function directly and then you can pass the pipeline class that we've just defined or in a more traditional way you could create an object of the class that you just defined and you can use that as a classifier. In this example I've just used the pipeline function from the transformers library and I've tested this example and I've given two examples as input which is this is a test message and the second one is I didn't go home yesterday which are totally not equivalent and the response I get is indeed a not equivalent. For another example I just give an input of this is a test message and the second sentence in the pair is this is also a test message and the response I get is equivalent. Before we move on to looking into models and tokenizers there's an important concept called auto classes in the transformers library. An auto class automatically does inference and loads the correct model architecture based on the model name that we provide. For example, if we just define the model name as Roberta large MNLI and use auto classification function and use a auto classification class, then by simply passing the model name to the from pre-trained function, the class takes care of loading the uh, right architecture and the parameters. Similarly, for the tokenizer, if I just use the from pretained and pass the model name, then the right tokenizer is loaded based on the model name. We don't have to worry about changing anything else. So the biggest advantage of this is that when you just want to do a one line code change and you want to change the entire model and the parameters that is getting loaded, if you just change this model name and you don't have to change any other line of code, the auto class takes care of uh, everything else for you. And in, in terms of the naming convention, all the auto classes begin with auto. For example, for the sequence classification, for model loading, the auto model for sequence classification is the naming convention. For tokenizer, if you just use auto tokenizer similarly, then it just based on the model name, it loads the right tokenizer. So there are auto classes available for all of the modalities across the board. For example, if you work on text, then you'll be working with tokenizers. Then there's the auto tokenizer class available. And there's a from pre trained method to which you just have to pass the model name. If you're working more with the speech or audio data, then there's the audio feature extractor class available. And again, you will pass the model name to the from pre trained method. If you're more of a image or computer vision person, you'll be working with auto image processor and you will be passing the model name, in this case, the vision transformer, to the from pre trained method from the auto image processor. Or if you're working on multimodality, then you just have to pass the model name again to the from pre trained method from the auto preprocessor and you create your uh, processor. Now that we have seen pipelines and the idea of auto classes, let's move on to the next element of Transformers library, which is tokens and tokenizers. So to use the tokenizer, there are two steps actually. So in step one, all you have to do is you have to import the auto tokenizer and again use from pre-trained method and pass the model name. So in this example, I'm working with the Roberta model. So I pass the model name to the auto tokenizer from pre-trained method and I get the tokenizer. This tokenizer is now ready to convert any input text into tokens. Let's give an input sentence, which is let's test tokenization with this. And with this input, the tokens that I'm getting is these, which are quite different from the input text that I provided. That's step one of tokenization. Note that we still haven't got any numeric conversion. So our input is not yet converted to numbers, which are understood by the models. So to convert the tokens into IDs, we have to use the tokenizer.convert tokens to IDs. Once we use that and pass the tokens that are created, then you can see that we have converted all the input text into numbers. These are not yet ready to be ingested or used by the model. All we have to do is prepare these input IDs into representations that are understood by the model. Let's look at another example using the Alberta model. So the name of the model is Albert Base V1. 
So we pass the model name to the from pre-trained method and we get the tokenizer. And to this tokenizer, we pass an input sentence, which again is let's test tokenization with this. And the output we get seems to be quite different from the output tokens that we get from the Roboto model. So as a next step, we again have to convert these tokens into IDs by passing it to the Alberta tokenizer dot convert tokens to IDs. And we get the Alberta tokens. And you can notice that the, the IDs are quite different from the IDs that we get from the uh, Roboto model because the models are different. The IDs are also different. Just this step won't be sufficient to pass these numbers into the model. The next step is to convert these IDs or prepare these IDs to be input into the model. For that, we have to do tokenizer.prepare for model and then pass these IDs. And the final output that we get can be readily passed as inputs to the model, which is the next stage. And you can see that there are special numbers that are inserted, which is the zero and two. These are the special tokens or the special numbers that get inserted whenever you prepare the uh, input for the model. If you really want to go backwards and convert these IDs into the tokens, you can always use the decode function. So if you do a tokenizer.decode and pass the prepared inputs, you can notice that we get back to the input sentence that we gave, which is let's test tokenization with this. The third and last element of the Transformers library is the models. So under these, we we'll look into the model classes and we'll also look into creating a custom model, basically changing the attributes or configuration of the model uh, or the parameters of the model. And then lastly, we'll see how we can push the, the train model or the modified model to the Hugging Face Hub. Let's start with uh, some of the most important classes or the functions related to those classes under the uh, auto models. So similar to tokenizers, if you know the name of the model, in this case, Robota Large MNLI, we could just pass the model name to the from pre-trained method under the auto model, and then you will load the model. And once you've loaded the model, you can then use it for fine tuning, or you could directly use it for inference. Let's say if the model is stored as a float 32 and it's a large model, then we probably have to load it as a float 16. For that, you could just pass the torch D type parameter and say it's a float 16. Then the model will be loaded in float 16 instead of float 32. If you have the Python library accelerate, then what you can do is you can force a low usage of the uh, CPU memory which for most of us is when you're loading the model in your laptop, then you can probably pass this parameter low CPU memory usage equal to true, and the model will use less CPU memory whenever you're loading the model. But you can use this only when the Accelerate Python package is installed. You can also overwrite some of the configurations when you're actually uh, loading these models. For example, when I'm loading the BERT model, and I'm not only passing the name of the model, but I'm saying output attentions is true, which is just to sort of overwrite the, the default configuration that comes with the model. You can even load from a different framework like Flags or TensorFlow into your PyTorch workflow. All you have to do is just say from Flags is true. Then the model that's been stored in Flags will just be loaded into your uh, PyTorch framework. Whenever we are working with these models, we'll notice that at some point we'll have to save these models both locally and also on the Hugging Face Hub. So to save the model locally, all we have to do is model.save pretrained and provide a unique name where the model needs to be stored. For example, on the Colac workspace, I've given the name Roberta model and we can see that it gets stored under my model and as a robot model. There's a config.json file that, get, that gets created corresponding to the configuration of the model. And there's also the weights of the parameter of the model. So if we open the config.json, we can see all the different configurations corresponding to the model. And one of the configurations is the number of attention heads, which is 16. If at all, we want to change any of these parameters, we can do so. Let's change the number of attention heads to 32. So all we have to do is just mention the number of attention heads and set it to 32. And then we create the model using from pre again. And if we save the model with a different name, we can notice that the saved model now has the number of attention heads as 32. So once we have saved the local model, we can always push it to the Hugging Face Hub. For that, 
we just have to log into the Hugging Face Hub, which we can do using Hugging Face CLI space login. And we could just use the command push to hub and pass a unique name to the model under which it gets stored in the Hugging Face Hub. So I've given the name my first Robota model and it gets stored under the same name under my profile. So that brings us to the end of this walkthrough of the Transformers library. Would you like to see more of hands-on coding exercises or would you like more papers to be explained? Please let me know in the comments and I really look forward for your comments and thanks for watching and I will see you in my next. Until then, take care.